everyone. It's me, a voice from the past, a voice from the future, a voice from the now and the present. I'm here in this Geek Syndicate review episode to talk about Doctor Who, as we've done in the past. And as usual, I'm joined with the immortal Barry Nugent. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back. It's good to talk about it. It's been a, it's been an age. It's been an age since we spoke. It's also been an age since we've talked about uh, the good doctor. It is. I mean, it's been a year. Well, like over a year, really. Because I don't think we did the Christmas episode, did we? Because we both had stuff going on. So it was yeah. literally it was the the power of the doctor was the last one we saw. I think. In fact, it was the one that, I can't even remember. Do you know what I can't? No, remember. that was the one at Christmas, wasn't it? Was that the Christmas one? Yeah. I, yes, it was. It was, yes. Sorry, my brain is gone. Oh. That's the uh, the regenerative re- regenerative processes coming in. They're just eating away my brain. So yes, I imagine are... people listening to this now thinking like, "Wow, this, yeah, is... Well, this is this is some, some quality audio." I'll this have, is you know. some quality. This is like big finish level quality. This, this, this is yeah. This is this is this is the the pinnacle of podcasts. Is what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Pinnacle or something, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we are here to talk specifically the first of the 2023 specials, as they're being branded, yeah. before we reset back to Series 1 again. And this is the uh, Doctor Who the Star Beast, which sees, uh, uh, sees the Doctor back on the screens. I'm going to read the blurb from the iPlayer. It's nice and short. And then we can get into it, yeah. So, The Star Beast, uh, written by Russell T. Davis, based on The Star Beast from Doctor Who Weekly by Pat Mills and Dave Gibbons. And I've got to say, it was really good to see how prominent a credit they got. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, quite surprised by that, actually. It was nice. Yeah, it was. It, it, uh, yeah, I think the rest of Disney could learn a lot from that. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, the Doctor is caught in a fight to the death as a spaceship crash, la- crash lands in London. But as the battle wreaks havoc, destiny is converging on the Doctor's old friend. Donna. Right, so we're sure, wasn't it? It, it? Yeah, literally two sentences. But so I just, think I just want to say to start off with, so I just mentioned there about Pat Mills and Dave Gibbons. And um, I don't know if you watched the Doctor Who Unleashed episode that came out, which is like the kind of like behind the scenes thing they do. No, so is, is this a bit like the old Doctor Who Confidential that you used to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. pre- pretty much exactly the same format, really, right. um, but with a different host. So essentially in that, they had like the behind the scenes filming and stuff and both uh, Pat Mills and Dave Gibbons were on set. Oh, so cool. Point, so they could see like the, the, the meat come to life and all the designs, which were just so heavily influenced by the, you know, the comic kind of thing. Like, you know, everything was, it was like the comic book come to life kind of thing. It was, so for them, that must have been great. Yeah. Um, but also I noticed on Twitter, um, Pat Mills was saying that basically um, the BBC and Bad Wolf gave them some royalties for the for the story uh panini did not <laughs> which was obviously they owned the comic so the bbc book got the rights to the story off panini uk or marvel uk as it used to be and yeah basically the bbc and bad i imagine russell c davis says by the way we're paying them for their work <laughs> fair play. so you know fair play that's that's really good and the fact you know the credit was so prominent they were on set for it and it was it was a good adaptation it was very different but it kept the heart of that original story and the designs and stuff so fair play for all that i'm you know all on board with that um that's how a, a comic adaptation should be done marvel yes marvel uh, <laughs> <So, no. laughs> but it's quite funny because because like back in the day doctor Who weekly it was so um, it was marvel uk that published it so like on all these early comic strips so i've got the star beast in front of me and it's like literally stan lee presents doctor who and the star beast <laughs> it's really weird excelsior <laughs> yeah. but it's kind of like you know things are coming full circle a bit yeah so kind of going speaking of like the marvel stuff what did you think of so i'll, I'll split this into two so what did you think of the new who universe logo um <clears throat> <to you. laughs> and uh what did you think of the new opening titles Okay, so the New Universe logo stuff, I'm fine with. Don't mind that. I quite like the fact now because it is, it is like showing Doctor Who as a franchise. So if you have like a unit series, you can still have the same sort of thing coming on. But I've also I've been watching quite a lot of the stuff on the iPlayer because they've got the Who Universe area on the iPlayer. 
Yeah. So I've kind of got used to it a bit because I've been watching the like the feature length cuts of old stories that they've done with like bookends on, um, which are some of the bookends are really well done. And uh, side note, our mate Sam did the music for those. Um, he also did the Sarah Jane adventures back in the day. So I, I quite like that. And it, like I say, you know, if they do like a strike back style unit series, you could still have that same kind of like this is in the hood universe. Kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever. So I, I quite like that. Um, I think for for my taste, I think there was a little too much of new Who in the kind of like little vignettes that they had, and not enough classic Who. But that's just me being an old grumpy fan. <laughs> <laughs> but the actual kind of like you know the kind of the showcasing of stuff and all that, I, I, I didn't mind that bit. On the other hand, the new titles, I'm not a fan of at all. No. No, I don't. To be fair, when they so they did at the they did at the on the 20th anniversary kind of or back in the early November, I think it was they did like a preview of the new theme tune. Yes. And genuinely, I thought I had to double check because I thought, hang on a minute, this is just the 2005 theme tune. It was too similar, and this is part of one of the issues I've got with this. And it's they've had Russell T's handled it a lot better than I thought it was. But that nostalgia for that 2005-2006 era, era mm-hmm. is just so strong. And I know why they've done it, but it just feels like it, it's a step too far to have the theme tune. I mean, it was Murray Gold, obviously, still. Yeah, yeah. But it was very much, for me, it felt too similar to that, just a bit more bombastic. And then the titles, I'm like, where's my Vortex? You know, why, why is the clouds there? It felt more like a, a Star Trek spin-off title sequence, you know, with the TARDIS bursting through clouds of nebula and stuff. Yeah, that's a very good. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. And and then the bit where like the logo just kind of like spins in, I thought someone's just done that last second. That's like <laughs> that's like literally digit Adobe After Effects. Oh, I need an effect. Spin a diamond in, kind of thing, like you know. <laughs> Whereas because that same logo was used back in the seventies, right? That's the John Pertwee Tom Baker logo. Yeah. And in there, it actually became part of the vortex, and the shape of the vortex was the diamond shape, and the Doctor Who faded in and stuff like that. You know, oh it, yes, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. It felt a lot more professional, a lot more creepy as well, if I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got that kind of sense of, I mean, you did with the early Doctor Who themes anyway. You know, the the sixties and seventies theme, it was very, the theme tunes were very kind of like you don't know what the hell's happening kind of thing. You know, it was it was yeah. it was weird, deliberately so. So yeah, so I'm not, I wasn't. I'm not sold on the new titles, but they're not gonna. They're not. It's not enough to make me skip them. You know what I mean? I'm still gonna. No, work. I quite. I mean, yeah, I'm. I quite like them. I quite like the new. Well, like you said, I quite like the new theme, but again, sounds quite similar to what I've read before. I quite like the titles. I did get a sense that, like it was almost like we've got a budget now. That was something I was gonna say about the whole show, though. Yeah. The whole the whole episode, you could see the Disney. The Disney money coming through. You could see where someone's just literally come on and like splash the cash. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't, and I didn't have a problem with it. Didn't have a problem with it. Oh no, because it, it it was it was well done and it was done. It's. I mean, I suppose it was bound to with Russell T in charge anyway. But it had the heart of Doctor Who the whole way through. Yes. Even like I say, you know, with the titles that they weren't quite right for me, but it was still obviously Doctor Who. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was just. It was just kind of like, oh, look, we can do all these particle effects now. Let's do that. So how do you want to tackle it? Do you want to do uh, overall thoughts and then deep dive or deep dive, then then and ups? Let's do do overall thoughts because I'll tell you why is because we'll probably touch on most things anyway. And then we can just deep dive into things that we feel really need examining. Yeah. Cool. Um, So... Let's start with you this time. What do you, what do you, what will you, what do you, what did you make of the whole? I thought it was awful. Wish I hadn't come back. Uh, what a waste of my time, your time, and the listeners' time. And I'm out. Okay, th- so thanks for joining us for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> you know what? I, I was so excited for this episode in a way that I hadn't been excited for a long time. Mm. And that's not that's not knocking um, Jodie Whittaker or anything like that. But I, I think that there was stuff about her run that I actually really enjoyed, but there was a lot of stuff about her run that just didn't work for me. Yeah. And Sue had stopped watching it altogether. Literally, she saw the first episode with Jodie Whittaker and she was like, I'm out. 
Mm. And this was off the back of um, Broadchurch. We we literally just finished watching Broadchurch, which had her and David Tennant, and she was phenomenal in it. Yeah, yeah. So I think I was coming into that kind of really kind of expecting huge things, and I, I still say like I feel she got in some. You know, I still feel she got done a bit of a dirty, but there we go. She, yeah. Um, that- I completely agree. I can't wait for the big finish that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think there's going to be at some stage she'll do big finish, and I think people will realise she, she'll she'll be the she'll be new who's Colin Baker. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, I, I, but I think all the sort of hype for the 60th and and stuff like that, I was really excited for it. It was back on Saturday. It was you know it was going to be back on Saturday night in autumn, where it should be. Yeah. Um, you know, Sue was back on watching it, so it was both of us sitting down to watch it. And one of the, and in a lot of ways it didn't, in a lot of ways it didn't disappoint because I always think to myself when I watch, when I watch something, when I read something, when I play a game, whatever, the first question I asked myself at the end was um, to, you know, quite get it, was I entertained? Mm. You know, was I entertained? Did I have fun with it? Did I enjoy it? Regardless of any, other criticisms that I might have, did I enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. And for me, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. You know, um, I think, weirdly, one of my favourite moments in it was right at the beginning, was the Doctor just coming out of the TARDIS. And it's a, that's a perfect example, which is unlike Russell T, but it's a perfect example of all show and no tell it was brilliant where he just he's just walking around london mm. and he's so happy to be back in his old face because this was you know this was the incarn- incarnation that didn't want to go and yeah. he's like back and it's almost like i don't i'm it was almost that i don't really care at this moment why i'm just happy that i'm back yeah, yeah. um and it's almost like then when he because he literally meets donna in that scene doesn't he yeah, and it, I, I was, I was going to comment on that because it it would have been so easy to kind of like just have them narrowly avoiding each other and stuff for the episode. Just, yeah, yeah. But but to actually come in literally scene one, here you go. <laughs> you know? and, and I thought it was great because then it was like, this is great. I'm back, I'm back. And then it's like a smack to the face. Yeah. And um, you can see that on his face. And, yeah. And you know, he just tries to walk away and he's like, ah, kind of like... <laughs> And given the fact, I don't know how long it's been since David Tennant has like played the Doctor, but I mean, he just didn't miss a beat in it. And on the on the flip side, neither did Catherine Tate as Donna, you know. And they just worked so well together. Even before she, I suppose you should say, if you're listening to this, we are spoiling the hell out of this. Um, <laughs> but like, even before she got her memory back and stuff, and we'll come on to sort of that stuff. Um, I thought she worked really well. They worked really well because you could still tell that she had been changed by the doctor. She just couldn't remember. Yeah, and the, and there were little moments like when um, you know he offhandedly hands her the sonic and she just looks at it. Yes, uh, and that wasn't that wasn't scripted either. Yeah, that was that was Catherine Tate just doing that. Kind yeah, and um, there's a there was a bit where she kind of um, they're running to get out and. She kind of shuts the door on her family. Is like, I got to go back. I got to help, and the doctor like needs my help, whatever. And then she kind of runs off, and then her mum sort of goes. She called him the doctor, and I, it, yeah. So there was a lot of stuff in there, and this is and this is my kind of moving on to like some of my issues or whatever. It's like there's stuff in there which is just brilliantly showing, not telling, mm. and there's other stuff where they're just they're hammering home stuff where I'm kind of like you didn't need to have done that because you'd already done the you'd already done the heavy lifting yeah you know and I kind of feel overall like I said I enjoyed it overall I kind of think it should have been two episodes I, I kind of feel like they threw a lot in where I feel like if it had been given a little bit more room to breathe like in a two episode I think some of the characters that they kind of just brought in think we would have had a chance been, to grow a bit and had a chance to grow like um like rose because the thing is it's kind of you introduced and the thing is you're introducing like a lot of new characters you know like rose like um her dad 
well, like, so going. Like, I was going to say, for a lot of people, like Donna, because that's 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah, yes, good point. That is a good point. You know, which is probably why, and they, they obviously realised it because they gave Dad that big um, the, monologue the, the, at the beginning. The, the prologue. <laughs> the prologue at the beginning, which was, which I liked, but weirdly, I think I, I, I liked Donna's side of it more than I liked David Tennant's side of it. And it wasn't because I think Stace, because we've got like a little chat group going. Yeah. For it, and I think she kind of nailed it. His bit just seemed a bit weird. Yeah, because he was just stood like in a void almost or whatever it was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, yeah. I, and, I, I, w- w- when it started and that was the thing, I thought, what the hell's going on here? This is just nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, it was hers. She was, you know, she was in her house, and it so it kind of fitted. I kind of wish he was, he was just in the he was just in the TARDIS, like chilling or something. Mm. That would have, I think, worked better. But you know, it, it was a but it was a good way to bring people up to speed who had either forgotten, um, or had never watched those episodes. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So it it, it definitely needed something because my big fear for it was that it was going to be too mired in that kind of like fan service and nostalgia kind mm-hmm. of thing um but i think it was handled a lot better than i was expecting it to be and i i mean as i said to you before we started recording I've, I've actually watched it three times i watched it twice through because i i watched it on my own because amy was out cara was staying somewhere overnight so i was literally on my own so i watched it and then when amy got home she went to watch it and i literally just stood and watched it again yeah. So I, so I stood up for an hour in in the room because I was thinking I'll go upstairs in a minute <laughs> and watch it. And then by the time I'd done, it was finished. Because I was like, oh, hang on a minute, what, what's happened? <laughs> yeah, that um, says it all, did it? Yeah. So, so yeah, that gives you. And then I watched it with the commentary because there's a commentary on iPlay. And I was going to watch it again today, actually. <laughs> so yeah, so I I loved it. I thought, yeah, I, I had some issues with things, but when don't you? And like you say, I was yeah. massively entertained by it. Like you say, it was a joy to see David Tennant just coming back in and Catherine Tate, to be fair, um, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Catherine Tate. However, the doctor and Donna dynamic was always one of the best from the show. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't fault that what you, what you think of various actors or performance or whatever aside, it worked. And I always felt like that she, she got a bit of short shrift with the whole memory wiping and, and kind of almost being reset to herself. But what I liked was, as you said, you kind of saw that there were parts of that time that she still remembered, like the fact she just gave the lottery ticket away because, yeah. sorry, the money from the lottery away because, and and it, that again, that was another kind of quite subtle moment where she just says, oh, I just thought it was what you would have done. Kind of thing like, you know, that was before the whole yeah. kind of, I need, to, I need to go with the doctor sort of thing. Like, you know, but it was just a little line. I was like, oh yeah, stuff's still there. Kind of yeah. Thing. And I loved all that. So, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it was just joyful. Um, the other thing as well is he kind of like the doctor says, you know, an hour ago, I was this magnificent woman or whatever it was. So that's quite interesting because essentially the 14th Doctor story goes um, regeneration in power of the Doctor, liberation of the Daleks, which lasts for an hour, the children in need destination Scarrow thing, and then this. And Liberation of the Daleks is the Doctor Who comic strip that's running um, okay. in Doctor Who magazine. But Russell C. Davis, again, ties with the comics, was like, you're doing the first story for the 14th Doctor and it will be set in an hour. <laughs> kind of thing, like, you know, so, because he'd got the script written and it's like an hour later kind of thing. So, yes. Yeah, so, and that leads into the, the end of that comic. I've not read it yet, but I was reading stuff online and that leads directly into kind of Destination Scarrow, which was the Children in Need thing, which then leads us into into this kind of thing so I've, i quite like the fact that russell t is seeing it as a he's seeing other things as being as important almost as the television yeah. you know and the, and the comics being comics doctor who being as important as tv doctor who yeah um because it's been around you know the comics have been around since 1964 you know the there's been doctor who comics in some form so it, i think i think that's nice and the fact that this special started off with an adaptation of one of those very early doctor who weekly comics and that those ties to the world of comics is so prominent. I, th- I think so. I think it's a great thing for the show. Yeah. Because there's a lot there to be mined. So, yeah, no, it's really good. But yeah, I enjoyed the hell of it. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see if moving forward, I think there's going to be a lot more mining 
Yeah. I, I feel, you know, and I, I wonder how much of it will come from Big Finish, whether or not they'll do anything with that stuff. But yeah, no, as I said, I, I still, I would have liked to have seen this as either two episodes or a slightly longer um, episode. And we've got, I think it was a little over an hour, wasn't it? Uh, I think 57 minutes, I think. Oh, was just it? Oh, under, okay. Just under, yeah. I believe, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I agree. And also, the other reason it's quite selfish, because basically we're going to have like a week or two without Doctor Who before Christmas. So mm-hmm. it would have been nice to actually almost like fill that gap completely with specials. Yeah. On a yeah. selfish, like, I want to enjoy the hell out of this front. And yeah, you, you're right, because you could, you could have had um, almost an episode that you got a lot of that backstory over without having a monologue and stuff yeah. um, and introduced um, Rose and uh, reintroduced. Um, oh, what's Donna's mum's name? Is it Sylvia? Wanna... Sylvia. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say Jacqueline, but that's the actress, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sylvia. And, um, you know, it would be nice to get Will Finn for a scene because <laughs> it, because they filmed it before he passed away. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Um, that's what I wondered. And I don't know where I, I because part of me, I, I, in one respect, I could kind of understand why it's almost said like he's still around. But I just thought that little moment was so beautiful mm. where he thought he was dead. And yeah. he was like, oh, I love that old man. And you genuinely, and it, 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 you just felt it. And I almost kind of wished they'd stuck with that. Yeah. Rather yeah. than then turning around and going, oh no, he's in assisted living up the road. You know, it was funded and, by and, unit. Yeah, and unless they were going to go, unless they were going to go and see him, and then you had him in the episode. I think. So, I believe he is in one of the three specials. I oh yeah, I I did wonder. I I I I'm sure I saw something where I don't think for for a big bit, but I think there is a bit where they do possibly go and visit him or something. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, b- I believe that's yeah yeah because because I'm sure yeah I'm sure it was in the commentary and they said they were t- saying like you know this was filmed before he passed away and they did some filming with him so yeah um, I'm sure sh- yeah I'm sure that's what was said. So my thing, <laughs> my kind of it's not really issues like I said a lot of these things are just observations take it take it as you will really but like so obviously unit was in this. But my problem is, I was talking to Dave about as well, one of my problems was, I'm currently, I finished, I finished it today, listening <laughs> to the last Unit box set. Yeah. This is Unit Nemesis, which is on um, Big Finish. And again, if you like audio dramas and you like your Doctor Who and you're not listening to the Big Finish stuff, you are, you are, you are doing yourself a disservice. So, but my problem is, is my unit, that I don't know unit now, is through the audio dramas. It's not even through the TV series. Yeah. yeah. It's through yeah. the audio and that unit would have had this wrapped up in about ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. that, that that unit would have had this done done and done. before the doctor had even turned up at the spaceship site. Unit would have Kate Kate would have been all over it. We were Oz good and they would have sorted it all out. And I know from looking at the trailers that we are going to see Kate in it, mm. but it just didn't. I don't know. It was. It was weird because even the new scientific advisor, I've forgotten her name. Her name was um, Shirley Ann Bingham, played by Ruth Maidley. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, so Shirley Ann Bingham. Um, yeah, I liked her. Yeah, I thought she was good. But, and goes back to my earlier point of wish it was stretched out because you had a lot of moving parts in this. Yeah. Um, so, other than that, uh, that conversation with the doctor, but it felt she felt more like an assistant being there yeah. whilst the doctor could be the doctor. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously she turns up at the end, like, and she's got rockets in her wheelchair and she's got like darts and stuff, and it's all cool. But what I wanted to see more was that she's a scientific advisor. Because yeah. my, cause the scientific advisor I know from uni is Osgood. And in those shows, she she doesn't she doesn't do all the action stuff and the rest of it because her her weapon is her brain. Her weapon yeah. is her mind. And I guess that was kind of what I wanted to what I thought I was gonna get. And 
So you know, there's a bit right at the at the end where they do the Doctor Donna thing, which I thought was brilliant. I almost had shades of Rightful Calm, where they kind of they couldn't get to each other um, with the sort of bit of glass and stuff. And I loved all of that. And when she dies in inverted commas, and then um, oh no, it's, I think it's when the Meep is doing something, and then. You see, a, you see like a hand or whatever, and I wasn't looking that closely, but starts operating with switches, and obviously it yeah, yeah. turns out to be um, Rose. Yeah. But for a, for a second, I thought it was. Um, was her name Shirley? Did you say? I closed it down again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Shirley and Bennett or something. Yeah, I thought I thought it was going to be Shirley. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay, cool, yeah, because obviously she's like, she's going to be like Osgood, so she's already figured that out. And it's oh no, it's Rose, okay, because she's got part of the meta crisis energy. Oh, okay, yeah, so, it, so really, she, she's got a bit of reset T Davis going on. Yeah, so really, the scientific advisor didn't really do much scientific advisory. Yeah, so I I did have one other little bugbear with that as well. Which was, she says, yeah, I'm scientific advisor number 56. Are you going to go proper geek now? Aren't you? Which, felt, which felt like a lot, right? But also then the doctor says, I was number one. It's like, no, you weren't. This sure was number one. Mm-hmm. You came in afterwards and just took her job. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it, literally what happened? <laughs> So he yeah. was he was number two literally. He was number two literally, yeah. 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 Well, Russell, if you if you're listening, still time to maybe change that. It's too late or, now. Yeah, he's made it. He's made a nemesis. <laughs> yes, sir. Nemesis of the Davis. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, these are all kind of like they're just minor gripes for me. As I said, overall, I had a great time with it, and but as I said, it's just it, it's just the enthusiasm of Donna and the Doctor and certainly together. I think enthusiasm is a good word for it, right? Because you could see all the cast were having a great time. Yeah. You could see, you know, Rachel Talalay back um, directing after, you know, she directed some of the best Peter Capaldi episodes, mm-hmm. just on form with the action, enjoying having the effects budget to spend. Yeah. You know, um, the effect scene clearly having a whale of the time as well. You know, it was just everything was there. You know, it was just yeah. everything was on point. There wasn't really, like we said, little gripes aside with like the overall plot or whatever, or, you know, little bits that seemed a bit either resolved quickly or not spent enough time on or whatever. All that aside, just the enthusiasm that everything was on it and the money on the screen. And it felt almost, it felt like big budget Doctor Who. It felt like Doctor Who almost you know, should be in a way on telly. Yeah. It should have that kind of money in it to, to make it really pop, you know? So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah it's almost done that thing. Like I said, which big finish was always able to do because, because it's audio, their plots and their, what they get up to is a, is a lot more vast, a lot more expensive yeah. because you're dealing with audio. You see, yeah, it's yeah. far, far easier to kind of convey certain things. Just listen. I said, just listen to that box set um, today. I don't even. I should to think how much it would cost to try and do that mm. as an actual TV show. I mean, it's big budget movie. You're talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, I, I I liked it. I think it it did fall into the um, the Russell T trap of just making up, just just make some stuff up at the right at the end. Yeah, that's I say. Re- reset T Davis, I call it. But, yeah. but but it felt okay. I just almost would have looked like I thought. I thought these three specials were going to be on the Doctor trying to stop Donna from exploding, basically. Yes, so did I actually. So yeah. I feel a bit shortchanged because of that, and I almost wouldn't have liked, wouldn't have minded if. Do you know what? Like they keep going back or Rose pops or they take Rose with her and Rose is then part of the solution. But you've had the time, like you say, to introduce her to show who and what they are, you know, who and what she is to actually get that resolution and it not feel 
like forced is the wrong word, but rushed. Yeah. Because I thought I thought the sentiment of it, the fact that, you know what, because you know, you've you've had a child and that child is also then special, so could share the kind of like the the energy kind of thing from the meta crisis coming out again didn't mind that too much i still don't think two humans should have been enough but whatever <laughs> um but but it would have been i would have almost liked to have seen that kind of struggle throughout the three episodes uh, having said that i now don't don't really know what the other two are going to be and if there's going to be much of a link between them other than it's the doctor and donna again and obviously there's going to be some kind of resolution at the end at the end of episode three but yeah it's just going to be interesting to see what they do now because what i thought it was it's not going to be yeah so yeah i i think because you do you know who the villain is that's coming back yeah in the third in the third episode yeah. yes so, Neil, Neil patrick harris's character yes i'm yeah aware. so i think that is who the meat refers to at the end because a bit where he sort of says oh you know the, bo- the boss the boss the boss and again, going back to Ross T, he likes to do that sort of stuff. Like the kind of like he will knock four times and, you know, he yeah. likes to do he likes to do that sort of breadcrumb lane type thing. Yeah, it's, it's so, like the kind of the, the soft arc almost. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I think that's a good way to look at it. So I think, I think if there's a thread, that, that will be the thread. And I think the second episode will probably still be... I think probably what you'll get in the second episode, you'll get a standalone story, but I think probably this one will link much more directly into the third one mm. yeah i so i think i think you're probably right about the boss thing however i don't like it purely because the celestial toy maker as a character is basically an immortal god being who is like q basically they're q yeah q before q so why why would he have people working working for him yeah He's cute. He never did before. He had he had constructs from his own imagination. You know that that's my only issue with that. But I don't mind that much because it's just me being an uber nerd again. Yeah, it's, and it's all good, buddy. It's his entertaining friends. telly. Then the entertaining telly is great, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. <laughs> and that is the thing. Is like we can sit here, we can you know pull a thread on things and go. Maybe this didn't work as well, or we could have strengthened that a bit. But you know, at the end of the day, was it entertaining telly? Yes. Yeah, hell yes, yeah, it was. It's pretty had a smile on my face. As I said, there's um, there were bits in there, and there were like really little cool things that I quite like. Like, I really liked the there's a bit he's literally just sitting and chilling, and he's got his sonic screwdriver and kind of uses it to draw like a screen, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just when um, uh, the scientific advisor comes up and talks to him, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought that whole sequence, and then when she rocks up in their conversation, I thought that was wicked. It was mm. a great use of like the sonic screwdriver, which let's be honest, it's not just sonic anymore, is it? You know. But it was a it was a great way to sort of do something different with it. Yeah. And then when he used it to kind of make the shields when they're having the big firefight. Yeah, yeah, I kind of saw those as sonic barriers. Ah, uh, yeah, I like uh, it. That that's yeah. how that's how I that's how I got around that one in my head. <laughs> yeah. That again yeah. it was it was I liked that and I liked the fact they shattered like glass. Yeah, it was there was some really cool like touches and I think they're the bits like you say where there's a bit more of a budget and stuff so they can someone can have an idea and they can kind of run with it but the way that they they didn't overdo it on those bits you know you could see where they'd spent the money but it wasn't like so overdone that it almost felt like a different show it still felt like a Doctor Who show you're watching yeah absolutely it was the, the money was spent well and appropriately yeah (laughs) <laughs> last nigga I've got to say though <laughs> because I, I feel that I'm challenging Dave on tea because we did talk about it and we both said this so I feel like I have to say this in his honour when um, the meep turns on the dagger drive that's what it's called isn't it uh, the uh, uh, it was something like that yeah the, it, was, uh, it was the it was uh, it, it was basically dagger stanchions yeah it was basically you make drill you know yeah um when he turns it on and obviously it goes in and the whole concept is it's going to destroy all of London. Great. Yeah. Well, not great, obviously, but, you know. Depends. Right. And you see all these sort of, yeah, you see all these cracks going out and, like, flames and all sorts. And I was like, this is cool. You know? And then they just zip back up again. But then, yeah, it was like they flip some switches and stuff and then 
turn it and it's like, oh, we're going to reverse it. And then it all just sips it back up. And I was like, but <laughs> how does, but, but I get you turning it off. That's great. But like, if, if you've got a car which is on fire and you, someone goes, quick, turn off the engine and you turn off the engine, the car's still going to be on fire. Oh, does yours not auto put out and self repair no. the paint and stuff? No, because I don't drive Night Rider. so i didn't know and again it's that thing of i kind of ah russell you know yeah because i was just kind of like well how does that work surely there'd still be flames everywhere yeah see i I must admit because yeah i i I thought exactly the same i was like oh here we go but i'd have almost preferred it if there was almost like more localized destruction and then like there's just a line with like unit going well that's something else we've got to pay for or something like yeah know. we've got we've got to deal with it now do you know what i mean yeah I, I, but i quite or if they'd done it as a sort of i don't know how some sort of timey-wimey thing was like oh we can reverse this blah 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 flux capacity i don't know and that, it's almost like time they're reversing time so like that's why it zips itself back up yeah yeah you know but just yeah, just just turning it off. Just turning it off. I, I don't. Yeah, I yeah I. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> I completely. But again, for me, that's just a that's just. But a like I said, reason. I just didn't. <laughs> it, it wasn't. It wasn't enough for me to go. Well, this is just nonsense. It, no, I exactly. just went. I just I just looked at. It, I was like, of course it's going to do that. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> because why would you have to spend the time to try and deal with it when you can just go? No, everything just zips itself back up. But why is that Russell? It just does, all right? Because it's like the um, the pitch meeting guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, why? Because that works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, what happens to the tanker drive? Won't it destroy London? No, nah, he'll just switch yeah. it off. But what about the flames? No, nah, we'll sort that out. It'll be barely an inconvenience. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <sighs> super easy belly and inconvenience yeah that's it yeah <laughs> belly and inconvenience um uh, yeah but yeah. no as I said we, we have poked holes <laughs> in this but I did I genuinely I I will be watching it again I did really enjoy it um I had a lot of fun with it more so than I've had with Doctor Who in a long time to be honest yeah but Mm. Me too. I mean, like, like I said, I wasn't. I was a little bit skeptical initially. I started getting in the mood, sort of like come November, because I started watching some of the universe of some of the old episodes and things. So I started to get a bit more amped for it. But I've not yeah. watched any trailers or anything. So I was like, you know, I've, I've, I've bits have leaked into my brain when I've been scouring around the internet and stuff. But I've kept fairly kind of a, uh, what's the word, um, ignorant of what this was this show was going to be kind of thing so the fact that i went in and i enjoyed it as much as i did with all the reservations i had going in yeah then that that says much to me and then oh i've got i've got to just chef's kiss the new tardis console it's yes. big it's a big room yeah but we, i think possibly too big but that's my only gripe it's beautiful love yeah. it he's and I, his reaction to it as well kind of sold it to be honest yeah 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 yeah. The other thing is also, you know, like all the lights, different colours and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. They're all individually controlled, so they can actually spell out words on the wall and stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're all they're all like on a, yeah, you know, like um, like our Christmas tree lights where you can like program them and stuff. They're uh... like LEDs. Behind. They're they're all those roundels. Each one is it, again the Disney money coming in, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I ah oh, love that set. I, and I the first wonder... thing they do is blow it up. I know. <laughs> <sighs> I was like, I literally was like, no. But then this is, but you know, but does this mean like the shooty Gatwa? Shooty, yeah, yeah, yeah. But does that mean? Because I'd be a bit annoyed otherwise. But does that mean then that he doesn't get a new Tardis console room? Possibly, because that's annoying. But then David Tennant didn't. Didn't he? They- no, David Tennant inherited the horrible coral thing from Christopher Eccleston. Oh, I've got it in my head. The, the first time they changed the console was when Matt Smith took over. Ah. And then they changed it a couple of times with Matt Smith. Then Peter Capaldi had Matt Smith's TARDIS for a bit, and then his own one. 
Jody got a new one straight away. Oh, uh, okay. It's all slightly better then. And also, you know, back in like classic Doctor Who, no one really got a new. Time. No, you <laughs> you just, just, they, you they just kind got of got what you were given. You got what you were given. Yeah, it's like you know they did a new one for the uh, basically for the twenty fifth anniversary story. No, sorry, the twentieth anniversary story, the Five Doctors. Mm-hmm. That's when a new console came in, and then that stayed to the end. And then Paul McGann had his. Well, he didn't really, because Sylvester McCoy had that first, because he was in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good point. Good point. Stand corrected. I wonder, hearing what you said about like the lights and that you can spell out stuff, I wonder if they're going to try and use that as a way for the TARDIS to communicate. They, they could well. So, so it's quite... Again, watching the um, the commentary afterwards, Phil Collins would say, he's like, the director's like, they just want to spend all the time on that set because there's so much stuff there that they can use in so many angles and stuff. Yeah. Things that they can do with it that it, all, all the directors have been really excited about it. So I have a feeling there might be more TARDIS interior stuff coming in the next series, <laughs> uh, which would be great because I, I love seeing, to be fair, I like to see more than just the console room as well. But yeah, yeah that's just me. But, and, and that's one of the things where I thought, oh, if it was a bit smaller, they could have had two sets and maybe had a couple of the other rooms kind of thing like, you know, but Again, I'll, I'm not going to knock it because it was... No, yeah. it was brilliant. It was, brilliant. yeah. <laughs> and on that note, unless you've got any no. final thoughts? No, that was, that was my final thoughts. Um, I'll take those thoughts to bed with me. Have nice TARDIS-shaped dreams. Okay. Not like... I don't I'm not, I'm not, mate. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, do you know what I mean? <laughs> whatever floats your TARDIS. Whatever floats the TARDIS, mate, you crack on. <laughs> and on that note... Allons-y. <laughs> Allons-y. <laughs> so we'll... Yeah, let's let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. Yes. yes. This <laughs> becoming nonsense now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it started off nonsense and went downhill from there. Um, but yeah, no. So thanks, everyone, for joining us for this review episode. Um, it's been great talking to you again, B. Um, and we haven't done a podcast for a long time anyway so it's been good getting back into it um with my little cup of tea so so that was good um i hope all you listeners or listener or listeners from whichever dimension you're from have enjoyed listening to us ramble about the star beast for a while we enjoyed it we hope you did let us know if you didn't be where can people let us know if they didn't or if they did uh, good question. You can um, join us on our private Facebook group. Um, I will put the link in the show notes. You just knock on the door and I'll let you in. We are on Instagram. We are on Twitter or X, whatever the hell Elon Musk wants to call it. Um, at Geek Syndicate and same for Instagram. I just said that. Uh, we have recently um, joined... What's the new thing called? Blue Sky. Blue Sky, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, so I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And I don't know how many people can get on it because a lot of it's in fights and stuff. But if you can get on it, come over. I've literally done two posts. So. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still not on it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so everybody might be there, there we go. And, of course, you can drop us an email at thegeeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk. It's probably going to be the best place to do it. If you want to support the shows, uh, you can do. You can buy us a virtual coffee on ko-fi.com or you can um, become a patron and support the show that way. Links again in show notes. And that's me done with the plugs. Perfection. Excellent. So we will be back in about a week's time. Annoyingly, I'm not going to be able to watch it not watch next week's episode on airing because I'm at a um, a camp with the scout group that I'm with and stuff. Uh, so I'll, I'm going to see if I can catch it later on in the evening on iPlayer. So we may be a bit later recording next time or it might still be Monday depending whether I've caught up. But either way, we'll be back. We'll be back. And we hope you will too. So thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye all.